Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me. Today is the 110th anniversary of the RMS Titanic hitting the iceberg that would send it to the ocean floor along with more than 1,500 souls early the following morning. I've been very passionate about the Titanic for as long as I can remember and today we are honoring the RMS Titanic with these luxurious sudsy champagne scented shampoo bars. I have loved the Titanic since I was a child and I have been wearing this hat for Titanic week every year since I think I was about 11 years old. I've shared a couple Titanic inspired formulations over the years including a Vinolia soap kind of recreation that's the soap that was given to the first class passengers on the Titanic and I actually got to meet Robert Ballard and I gave him a bar of my Vinolia soap and that was definitely a high point in my Titanic fandom. I've also made a lot of Titanic costumes over the years. So if you'd like to see some pictures of me kind of flouncing about in some pretty Edwardian inspired dresses, I'll link to some blog posts that are full of pictures in the description box below. So onto the shampoo bars. We're making a pretty big, well, big by my standards at least, 300 gram batch of these shampoo bars. Just how many bars you'll get out of 300 grams of shampoo bar dough depends entirely on how big you make your bars. Regardless of how many bars that is, this is definitely months worth of of shampoo though. To make these shampoo bars, and honestly to make any shampoo bars, it is absolutely essential that you have a well fitting high quality dust mask. Inhaling powdered surfactants and they, they become airborne so easily, just opening the bag is enough. It's just unbelievably unpleasant and will send you running out of the room gagging and coughing. So you really do want that dust mask that really seals onto your face. A cloth mask is absolutely not going to cut it here. You want something with a nice like flexible rubber gasket and straps that you can tighten down so that no sneaky surfactants can crawl in the sides and go up your nose. When I think about the Titanic, I think about luxury. So I knew these shampoo bars needed to have really dense, abundant lather. Our primary solid surfactant is finely powdered sodium cocal isothionate, and you'll need 129.9 grams of it. This gentle anionic surfactant creates dense, rich lather that is absolutely divine. I've read it described as lace glove lather and thought that was very on brand for something inspired by the Titanic. You can learn more about sodium cocal isothionate with a full deep dive video I did on it. Our secondary anionic surfactant is 60 grams of sodium cocal sulfate in in the little sticky needly form that kind of look like little sprinkles. This surfactant creates insanely plentiful fluffy lather and really amps up the oodles of bubbles factor. Sodium cocoa sulfate is different from sodium laurel sulfate so if you want to learn more about this please make sure you look it up in the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia. Sodium cocoa sulfate is generally considered to be quite a lot milder than sodium laurel sulfate. If you don't have sodium cocoa sulfate you could use sodium laurel sulfoacetate or SLSA instead but this will change the pH of the formulation, so please make sure you are reading the full partner blog post where I discuss the ramifications of making that change more. Both of these surfactants are solid, and that solidness is really important for the final product also being a solid, so please don't try to swap either of these solid surfactants for a liquid surfactant or you'll make kind of shampoo paste rather than a shampoo bar. The format and the particle size of this surfactant is also very important to the formulation turning out as the finer the powder is, the more surface area it has and the more liquid it will absorb. If your sodium cocal isothionate is a chunkier powder or in sticks, make sure you are running it through your DIY only coffee grinder with your dust mask on to transform it into a nice fine powder before continuing. If you don't do this, you'll probably find that there's too much moisture in the dough and it's quite hard to work with. For more details, please make sure you're reading the partner blog post. Our final surfactant is 22.2 grams of amphoteric cocomidopropyl betaine. This liquid surfactant helps boost flash foam and make the overall surfactant blend gentler. That is it for the surfactants and after that we've got six more ingredients. 45 grams of white kaolin clay adds a beautiful luxurious creaminess to the lather. I just love clay in my Sindet bars. The clay also makes the Sindet bars a bit easier to shape giving them more of a doughy moldable consistency. 33 grams of Abyssinian oil helps refat the shampoo bars so that your hair feels clean but not too clean. Four and a half grams of cationic polyquaternium seven brings some conditioning goodness to these shampoo bars. One and a half grams of Liquid Dermal Plus preserves these shampoo bars and 1.8 grams of a 90% lactic acid solution brings the pH of these shampoo bars down to a hair healthy range of about five to six. The reason we're including this acid is because sodium cocosulfate is really quite basic and so we need to counteract 
that basicness. You could use a different acid to lower the pH if you don't have lactic acid, but you will need to do some redevelopment work on the formulation to determine exactly how much you need. And lastly, 2.1 grams of champagne toast fragrance oil makes these shampoo bars smell like champagne. So you feel like you're washing your hair with champagne and that sounds very Titanic level decadent to me. To make these bars, we'll divide our ingredients into dry stuff, and wet stuff, and then mix it together into a dough that you can shape however you like. So not to sound like a broken record, but make sure you are wearing your dust mask. And then put the sodium cocal isothionate, the sodium cocal sulfate, and the kaolin clay into a bowl and stir to combine. Up next, add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients. You can kind of start stirring with a spoon or something, but Fairly quickly, you're gonna to wanna to pop a pair of gloves on and get in there with your hands to mix and knead everything together until you have a workable dough. If the dough feels a bit dry, you can mist it with a bit of liquid to kind of loosen it up. It really does not take much moisture at all to change the consistency of the dough, so be sparing. Once you have a uniform dough, you are ready to shape it into bars of whichever shape and size you desire. I divided my batch into three 100 gram lumps and then used my gifted bath bomb press and shampoo bar mold to press them into bars. Each of those bars had a little bit of scrap shampoo, so I rescued those scraps, re-moistened them with a little wee bit of misted isopropyl alcohol, and then made myself a tiny little sort of a shampoo golf ball to go with my three shampoo bars. Once the bars have been formed, you want to leave them for at least a day so that they can dry out a bit and get nice and hard. These bars contain approximately 5% water from the cocomitopropyl betaine, so we wanna give that a chance to evaporate off before we start using the bars and getting them wet regularly. To use a shampoo bar, get your hair soaking wet in the shower or the bath, and then just rub the bar right on your head. It'll work up a lovely lather, and then it's, you know, it's just shampooing from there. Suds, rinse, condition, voila. Make sure you are storing the bar somewhere where it can dry out between uses. So you can absolutely store it in the shower. I definitely do. I just make sure to keep it on a wire rack so that it's not sitting in a puddle. To learn more about sodium cocoa isothionate, click here. And to learn how to make a very easy hair conditioner to follow up your shampoo with, click here. Thanks so much for watching. Happy Titanic week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.